Let's talk about an ultimate topic today, death. Welcome to Enigma Files. Why must we living beings face death? What does death truly mean to us? This profound question has been contemplated by brilliant minds throughout history. Philosophers, thinkers, and religions across time have offered their explanations. But from a scientific perspective, what does death signify? Today, we'll delve into this very question. From a scientific standpoint, death plays a critical role. To understand it better, let's first examine what determines our lifespan. One key factor is telomeres, structures at the ends of our chromosomes that regulate the number of times a cell can divide. To simplify, let's clarify the relationship between chromosomes and DNA. DNA is a molecule, like a piece of paper filled with written instructions that describe how we are built. These instructions are our genes. A collection of such pages forms a book, and that book is a chromosome. In the human body, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 in total. For women, these pairs are identical, while for men, one pair differs, determining their gender. These chromosomes hold the blueprint for our entire being. However, the first and last few pages of these books are blank, and those blank pages are the telomeres. When cells divide, they copy these books to create new cells. During this process, the blank pages at the beginning and end of each book are lost. Over time, as cells continue to divide, the telomeres become shorter and shorter until no blank pages remain, halting further division. This is when aging and eventual decline begin. Essentially, our lifespan is determined by the initial length of our telomeres, which is fixed at birth. Telomere shortening also limits the number of times cells can repair damage. For instance, when we get a cut, it heals through cell division. However, this healing capacity is an infinite. Cells can divide approximately 50 times, a limit discovered in experiments at the University of California in 1961. This has led to research exploring ways to extend telomeres or prevent their degradation, which in theory could enable immortality. While this remains speculative, it represents the physical aspect of eternal life. Interestingly, the existence of telomeres suggests that whoever or whatever designed life didn't intend for us to live forever. But why? We'll explore that soon. Aside from telomeres, another factor affecting lifespan is DNA damage and mutation. DNA can be damaged by various factors, such as exposure to radiation, leading to cell death and, consequently, a shorter lifespan. A third factor influencing lifespan is the rate of aging, which is tied to the speed of cell division. Although telomeres limit the total number of divisions, slower cell division can extend lifespan. Imagine if a cell divided once every million years instead of frequently, it would theoretically prolong life. However, in reality, cells often divide every couple of years, limiting most humans to a lifespan under 100 years. What determines the rate of cell division? Metabolism. Metabolism is the process by which our bodies convert food into nutrients and energy to sustain life. This process wears down cells, requiring division to replace them, thereby accelerating aging and death. Consequently, slower metabolisms are associated with longer lifespans, while faster metabolisms lead to quicker aging. This principle is evident across various species. For example, Japan, known for its slow metabolic rates, had the highest average life expectancy in 2020. With women living to 86.9 years and men to 81.5 years on average. In contrast, countries like the Central African Republic and Somalia, with higher metabolic demands, recorded average lifespans of just 50 to 59 years. Women generally outlive men, partly because their basal metabolic rate is lower. For instance, a 30-year-old woman's basal metabolic rate is about 1,150 kilocalories per day, compared to a man's 1,530 kilocalories. This pattern holds true for animals as well. Smaller animals with higher metabolic rates, like mice, have shorter lifespans than larger animals, such as elephants. While it might seem counterintuitive since elephants are much larger than mice, the difference lies in heart rate. Mice with a heart rate of 600 beats per minute, live only a couple of years, while elephants, 
whose hearts beat just 20 times per minute, can live up to 70 years. Heart rate and metabolism appear to dictate lifespan across species. For instance, the Etruscan shrew, one of the smallest mammals, has a heart rate of up to 1,200 beats per minute and lives about a year. In contrast, the blue whale, with a heart rate of 8 to 13 beats per minute, can live over a century, with some individuals reaching 116 years. Other species, like bowhead whales and certain turtles, with even slower heart rates, can live for over 200 years. So, could we calculate lifespan based solely on heart rate? Scientists began exploring this question over a century ago. American and German biologists, after observing this phenomenon, began studying the relationship between heartbeats and lifespan across different species. They discovered something extraordinary. The total number of heartbeats in the lifetime of most mammals, warm-blooded animals, is roughly the same, around 1 billion beats. Based on this, a mouse with a heart rate of 600 beats per minute only lives about 3 years, while an elephant with a heart rate of 20 beats per minute can live 60 to 70 years. These findings align well with real-world observations. Later, some researchers thought the sample size might not be accurate enough and decided to conduct broader sampling, which continues to this day. Most animals indeed fall within the range of 8 to 12 billion heartbeats, though there are some exceptions below or above this range. For mammals, the faster the heart beats, the shorter the lifespan. However, there is one notable and extreme exception, humans. The average human heart rate is about 75 beats per minute, which translates to roughly 40 million beats per year. If humans were to follow the 1 billion beat rule, we would only live to about 25 years old. Yet humans often live to 70 or 80 years old, meaning our hearts can beat up to 3 billion times in a lifetime. This makes the human heart the most powerful in the animal kingdom. No other known animal comes close to matching the durability of the human heart. Even our closest relatives, gorillas, fall short, with heartbeats totaling only about 1.3 to 1.5 billion over their lifespan, staying within the expected range. Humans, however, are far beyond this limit. Why is the human heart so incredibly resilient? Some speculate it's due to our improved living conditions and advanced health care, which help preserve the heart. Indeed, countries with higher life expectancies, such as Japan, also tend to have higher GDP per capita, suggesting a link between longevity and wealth. But this doesn't fully explain why humans exceed the 1 billion heartbeat rule. Consider domesticated dogs like poodles, which enjoy excellent living conditions. Their heart rate is about 100 beats per minute, and they only live about 10 to 15 years. This translates to about 800 million heartbeats over their lifetime, which aligns with the rule. Even in optimal environments, their lifespan remains unchanged. Some have suggested that human physical strength might explain our extraordinary hearts. But this theory doesn't hold either. For example, horses, one of the strongest animals, have a heart rate of about 35 beats per minute and live around 30 years. Their lifetime heartbeats total less than 600 million, making them relatively short-lived. Thus, physical strength doesn't correlate with heart resilience. To this day, why the human heart is so robust remains a mystery. A playful theory attributes it to possible genetic modifications by ancient extraterrestrial beings, the Anunnaki, making our hearts extraordinarily strong. Despite this remarkable endurance, humans still follow the general principle that a faster heart rate leads to a shorter lifespan. This applies not just to the heart, but to most organs, which have a finite usage limit. Overuse can lead to their eventual failure. Thus, the saying life is motion is somewhat misleading. While exercise can make us feel refreshed, it comes at the cost of burning life energy. Moderation is key. Keeping the heart rate steady and avoiding excessive strain is crucial. This also highlights the importance of emotional regulation. Avoiding anger, stress, and intense emotional fluctuations can help maintain a healthy heart. Now that we understand the process behind human and biological death, a bigger question arises. Why must living organisms die in the first place? This is the key topic for today. The earliest forms of life on Earth were immortal. 
This isn't speculation. It's based on scientific findings. Life on Earth began with self-replicating ribozymes, which evolved into the earliest prokaryotic organisms, primitive bacteria. Some of these ancient forms, such as cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, and E. coli, still exist today. Cyanobacteria and E. coli are essentially ageless. They reproduce through self-cloning, creating genetically identical offspring. Because of this, they don't age. They are born as fully mature organisms and remain in a perpetually youthful state, continuously cloning themselves. These ancient organisms had no lifespan limitations and wouldn't die naturally. However, they still face death from external factors, starvation when food was scarce, poisoning in polluted environments, predation, or extreme environmental changes like freezing or overheating. One of their greatest threats was bacteriophages, ancient viruses that prey on bacteria. Bacteriophages specifically target organisms like cyanobacteria and E. coli. Additionally, because all prokaryotic life forms were clones, they shared identical vulnerabilities. If an environmental change exploited one of their weaknesses, it could wipe out entire populations. This point leads to an intriguing idea. If gods or extraterrestrials exist and are immortal beings capable of self-replication, they too would share identical weaknesses. Identifying such a weakness could make it possible to defeat them. Perhaps this is why deities or aliens remain hidden. They have vulnerabilities they fear we might discover. In future videos, we'll explore how to quickly identify the weaknesses of extraterrestrial beings and assess their potential dangers. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights. So, if these primitive immortal organisms are so fragile and prone to extinction, what happened next? After nearly two billion years of these immortal organisms dominating Earth, a more advanced life form emerged eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are the ancestors of multicellular organisms. Humans, for example, are made of eukaryotic cells and belong to this group. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, all of them are eukaryotic organisms. It was with eukaryotes that two major biological concepts appear for the first time, gender and lifespan. What purpose do these two serve? Let's start with gender. Before gender, organisms reproduce through cloning, essentially creating identical offspring. However, with the emergence of gender, reproduction became more complex, requiring the union of two genders within the same species to produce offspring. This complexity brought a key advantage, diversity. Unlike cloning, where all offspring are identical to the parent, the combination of two genetic sources through gender means that no two offspring are exactly alike. Why don't we look exactly like our ancestors? It's because of this genetic shuffling, which results in unique combinations for each individual. This variability ensures that the weaknesses of one individual aren't shared by all, making the species less vulnerable to extinction. In other words, gender acts as an extinction prevention mechanism. If gender helps solve the problem of extinction, why do organisms need lifespans? This ties into another factor, DNA damage and mutations. We know that things like radiation and cosmic rays can damage our genes. When this damage occurs, it may be passed on to future generations. If these genetic errors accumulate unchecked, they could doom the species to extinction. To avoid this, nature introduced lifespans. By ensuring that older generations die, they can't interact with and reproduce with newer generations. This separation prevents the accumulation of genetic errors across generations. Death, in this context, is a radical yet effective mechanism to preserve the species' genetic health. In essence, death has profound biological significance. It sacrifices individuals for the survival of the species. From this perspective, organisms with lifespans, higher organisms, have gained a remarkable evolutionary advantage. Death could even be considered a superpower of sorts, allowing life to persist and thrive on a larger scale. Without the death of past generations, there would be no healthy present generation. We choose to let our ancestors die to ensure our own health, just as our descendants will one day let us die to secure their future. From a broader perspective, humanity might be part of a larger living organism. 
the death of some individuals ensures the overall health of the whole. Just as cells in our body die off to maintain our overall health, so too might we function as a part of a greater whole. What about animals' understanding of death? Animals, too, seem to have an understanding of death. Take the world's most intelligent gorilla, Coco, for example. Coco was the first gorilla to learn sign language with a vocabulary of over 2,000 signs. She even cared for a pet kitten, which tragically died in an accident. Coco expressed profound grief, indicating an understanding of death. Her trainer, Dr. Francine Patterson, a renowned animal psychologist, asked Coco questions to assess her comprehension of death. When asked, do gorillas die? When do they die? Coco responded using sign language with three words, old, sick, die. When asked what happens after death, Coco signed, sleep. And when asked where one goes after dying, Coco replied, a comfortable hole. Dr. Patterson emphasized that she had never taught Coco about death, cemeteries, or burial practices. This was entirely Coco's own understanding. Another gorilla trained by Dr. Patterson, Michael, also demonstrated an understanding of death. Michael had witnessed his mother being shot by hunters when he was young, and when asked about death, he described it as pain and sadness. Though Michael knew fewer signs, about 600, his answers reflected a deep emotional grasp of the concept. These examples suggest that gorillas and possibly other animals have a perception of death akin to humans. Even dogs, for instance, often wander off to die alone, seeking a quiet, safe place. Today, we've explored the biological significance of death, how it helps ensure the survival of a species by protecting DNA integrity. However, biology is just one aspect. For humans, the meaning of death extends into the realm of philosophy. In a future video, we'll dive deeper into the philosophical interpretations of death and its significance. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.